with much aloha to the people, you know, because some of our people are holding that space of holding together air so that it's not completely destroyed by the city and county. And the reason that I say that is because quite honestly with the aloha of our for our people which you know their mana is in fact genuine and their air is genuine and their upholding of air is genuine however I will say that that event that's taking place over there is a farce and the reason for that is that all of those things, even though they look great and sovereign, they are the property of the city and county of Honolulu, which also believes that it owns this space and mm -hmm. us. And all the people that oppress Kanaka are over there. All the people that kick us off our own land and that make laws that um, threaten our livelihood and who we are as Kanaka and our rights, they're all over there pretending that they support us and pretending they support the idea of air and, this, that, and what this park stands for. And that's so heavy. That's why I refuse to go there because I'm not a hypocrite. I'm not going to go there and go hobnob with politicians who have our worst interests at heart. Make no mistake that this entire thing, including the air decorations, it, they are all part of a larger pr picture of gentrification and oppression. It is made to shut down protest. It is made to shut down the exercise of sovereignty. It is made to shut down the people who moi ike ala. And let me talk about that for a second because that is very important here at Thomas Square. You know, where we are seeing the fallout. You know, we come here to this spot every week and we feed people and the reason that we do that you know I mean it is out of our aloha but it's also because it the true exercise of a sovereign nation is to take care of the people if you don't take care of the people and you oppress the people you're not a government you know and you're not upholding the kingdom because the kingdom the first law of the kingdom is kanavai mamalahoi and Kanawaima Malahoi, the law of the splintered paddle, says that any man, woman, child, old person may lie in the road without threat of harm. And it says that further, that nobody with power can push around those people who have less power. And it says that if you break this law, you will die. And while I am a person of peace, I do not believe in violence. I do not believe in curses. I do not practice any of those things um, physically or spiritually. However, the truth is the truth and the law is the law. And in this case, we're talking about the government and a government that does not uphold the human rights of the people that are sanctified in Kalawaiwa Malahoi will fall and it must fall. And that is the result and to uphold the law of our kingdom we have to help it to fall and not help it to um, continue on with window dressings of sovereignty so that is why I am here but I will not pass this wall and go down to that area over there with much aloha and respect for those in our lahui who do because they're, they have a different koleana. However, I want to make it really clear, I'm very glad that Heilani is here and that everybody up here is here because somebody needs to hold a space of, no, we're not going to your event and we're not going to sing along protest songs according to your city and county of Honolulu printed schedule after you have brutally cleared out the people and I guarantee there was a raid last night. I guarantee it because every time they have one of these events, they specifically break Makanavai Mamalahoi in order to clear out the people so that they can have the event. Every single time, okay? So I guarantee that happened last night and I'm not down for that. That is Heva. That is Heva as defined by our law. So. I will not participate in Heva. 
I will not give Heva a, a pretty face and make it look like, oh, we're all good with it. So we're just, I just want to mahalo Laulani for coming out. I know it was hard for you. Um, I was a little irritated with you for not wanting to come, but hey, we're holding our space over here. This is our Lahui. Um, and uh, we're doing it the way we should do it, the Pono way. And we're not, we're not um, participating in the city and county uh, fake celebration because they have um, no clue, nor do they care about the the status of our people, the Kanaka Maoli and um, Hawaiian nationals, and they don't care about restoring our sovereignty to our people at all. And they don't care about the history of this park and how important to it, it is to us um, and our children. So we're, I'm here for my children. Um, I want this park to be here in place uh, for my keiki when they are ready to come and follow in my footsteps and hold space here too. Aloha. La o ne ya e holo ne e ala mai kako e nakini na mama o ka aina aloha aloha vale ia aina ko ka ko ka hua au e ka ili ili e ka o poeho ia ne e pai pai ho ia ka po haku i pa amai la ke ka hua hale ho no ka ko e na poe ho oluluai e ala e ka i ka mahi ka palena i mua aloha a ka leo ka lana kila. We are gathered here today um, to hold space for Alahui, and this is um, the position statement. <clears throat> and what the reason why we're here. Thomas Square holds historical and political significance for Hawaiians. This is where the five-month occupation of the Hawaiian Kingdom by the British ended on July 31st, 1843, when Admiral Thomas of the British government ordered the Union Jack Lord and the Hawaiian Kingdom flag to be raised. The park is named in honor of him. This is also on the day that King Kamehameha III proclaimed which translates to mean the sovereignty of the land is perpetuated in righteousness. Since then, July 31st has been a Hawaiian Kingdom national holiday known as Lahuihoiea, and it was celebrated by Hawaiians here and abroad until the United States illegally took control of Hawaii via joint resolution of Congress. Today, Hawaiians refer to the 1898 U.S. takeover as an illegal occupation because no treaty of annexation exists, which is the only document that could legitimize the American presence here as prescribed under U.S. and international law. Since 1986, Hawaiian nationals and patriots have gathered here annually to assert and affirm the sovereignty of the Hawaiian nation with no permits or permission from either the so-called state of Hawaii or the city and county of Honolulu. It continued that way until 2017, when joint control, maintenance, and management of this politically historic park was transferred over to the Department of Enterprise Services, a private money-generating corporation. Despite strong community opposition and with no consultation of the, with the Kanaka Maoli people, with million-dollar condominiums going up near Thomas Square, this park is set to become the jewel in the crown of the surrounding real estate. And now, 175 years after it was first de designated as the first Hawaiian Kingdom Park, where Hawaiians honor the sovereignty and righteousness of this land, it is finally getting a facelift from the city and county of Honolulu and DES. Historic events like Lahoihoiea are being tokenized as cultural events intended to enhance the value of Thomas Square by engaging the community with art and entertainment. Today, Hawaiian nationals have to sign a permit and get a million dollar insurance company coverage indemnifying all parties involved, including the occupying government, the city and county of Honolulu, to celebrate the Hawaiian Restoration Day. Thomas Square was created by the Hawaiian Kingdom Privy Council to memorialize and celebrate the sovereignty of our nation. And today, it is a symbol of our sovereignty as Kanaka Maoli and Hawaiian nationals over this archipelago. In conclusion, we must reject any claims that the state of Hawaii, the city and county of Honolulu, and the Department of Enterprise Services own or control this Hawaiian National Park 
and refuse to sign any permit or permission slip to use the lands that our king established Mekealoha Nui no Koka Kola Hui with love for our Hawaiian nation. Kanaka Maoli, Hawaiian nationals and patriots of the Hawaiian kingdom, hold your ground here at the Pico, the center of what is now a widespread celebration that extends throughout the islands and on Mokuhonu, the continent. It is important to stand. If we cannot hold down a park, how can we be Pono, righteous, in stating that our kingdom still lives? I want to introduce Kiana Marshall, who is also um, an organizer of this small gathering. And um, Kiana? Aloha, everybody. Um, uh, as Hayalani said, we are gathered here today to kind of not acknowledge those guys over there, but um, also in feeding the houseless um, of our community. Um, the park transfer to Department of Enterprise Services um, a year ago with a lot of community opposition, um, but ultimately the commercialization and privatization of this park was the ultimate goal and here we stand kind of being a renegade to the Caldwell celebration of the unveiling of the statue. Um, thank you, Heilani, Kalahui Hawaii, and everyone who came to support um, and acknowledge that this is an illegally occupied um, Hawaiian aina that is being commercialized by America, Caldwell, and Hawaii Visitors Bureau, etc., as a money making venture. Anyway, um, thank you. Mahalo. Mahalo. A song that was written for those who would never sign the paper that compromised our sovereignty.